to answer the question once and for all, whether you can water cool an air cooler. Hold on, we gotta get all the fins, Alex. What'd we get? That's 85 now, I'm dropping. Nice! What kind of motherboard has nowhere to install a CPU? Well, no motherboard. All motherboards need a CPU because otherwise what would do the processing? But if you look at this one, there's something a little unusual about it, right? You got your PCI Express sockets, you got your memory slots, and you got just a blank metal plate. That's because the CPU socket is on the back. But why? Well, as it turns out, this motherboard was designed with some pretty unique cooling concepts in mind, and I, for one, cannot wait to try it out. And I can't wait to tell you about our sponsor, .tech. .tech domains and Namecheap are donating 100% of all sales proceeds from .tech domains sold until July 5th to code.org to help make computer science education more accessible. Check out go.tech LTT to learn more. Other than the CPU socket being on the opposite side, the Anktec Rev Q270 is a pretty standard looking industrial motherboard. What I can't say the same about is the heatsink that they designed for it. And in order to explain why they thought that this was the best solution, I think we're gonna have to back up. Anktec is a spin-off company of EDAC Electronic Technology Co., who specializes in inspection equipment for electronics manufacturers like Foxconn, Panasonic, and Sony. AKA, these guys are the badasses that do the engineering work that lets other engineers test their engineering work. And for their inspection equipment, EDAC needed to have ultra-stable computers that are basically impervious to dust. So, Logically, they just went ahead and designed their own motherboard and flipped the CPU socket around. You see, when you're working in a manufacturing or fabrication-oriented space, there's nothing you can do about the fact that there is going to be some dust in the air. And unlike in your bedroom, we're not talking about cat hair. We're talking about potential metal filings, microscopic ones floating around in the air, which can eventually cause enormous problems for a computer. That's why in a workshop, passively cooled machines like this one from CompuLab here are king. Even slow spinning fans with an excellent dust filter are going to quickly get clogged. But to pull off this little marvel, CompuLab had to create an entirely custom chassis, motherboard, and actually a fair number of other things. So EDAC wanted to create something that's a little more modular and a little more affordable. Which explains how we ended up with a standard ATX form factor motherboard but it still doesn't explain this. Well, the thing is, to passively cool a CPU, even one that's not terribly powerful, you need a lot of metal. And EDAC wasn't able to fit a big enough cooler on the front of the case while still allowing for PCI Express expansion. See that? So after putting in the work to create this motherboard for their own uses, EDAC thought, well, I mean, yeah. What if somebody else found this useful? Thus, Anktec was born, and we were able to get our hands on this motherboard. So let's try it out. Wait, we are going to submerge it in water, right? Well, not that, but yeah. Sorry, not that? Well, yeah, not that one. Not that. Oh, yeah. but, the, but the thing. Yeah. Oh, good. Just making sure. Everything about this feels wrong. <laughs> Starting with flipping over the motherboard to install the CPU. Uh, we're going with a Core i7-6700K. This is near the top end of what this motherboard can support, but we're gonna try a 7700K a little bit later. And, oh, this is an interesting note. Uh, is there no cooler for the chipset? I don't, actually. there is. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Hey, look at this. When I see stuff like this, it makes me wonder if the engineers at Anktec aren't uh, watching LTT because We've said a lot of times, it's baffling, given how shamelessly computer companies rip each other off, that more of them haven't just ripped off knocked to a secufer mounting mechanism. And that's basically what this is, except with kind of a clever cost saving measure. So they use an O-ring here to secure the back bolts instead of having them be press fitted, which is just kind of cheaper, but a lot better than having them just flop around like a lot of other guys do. There we go. The, oh, huh, well, didn't think of that. Look at this, Brandon. 
there's so much space back here because of like the I.O. and stuff that you can't just, you can't just put it here and then put it down on the box. Just, I guess I just have to do it like this then? Like, is this how you did it? Not even close. Oh, all right. Well, this is how I'm doing it. All right, there we go. Uh, can I get that chipset cooler by any chance? I'm going for the no look catch. Oh, what the? Who does that? Threw it at my head. This is a very wimpy heatsink, considering that it is designed to be used with a passive CPU cooler. Yeah, not much to it. Compound and no way. <laughs> Really? It's just not aligned. They just used a generic, whatever this spacing, which is pretty standard heatsink, and it doesn't actually line up with the little like silkscreen marks they made for where it's supposed to sit. Another cost saving measure um, is that it doesn't come with a CMOS battery. So you'll just have to get your own uh, CR2032 three volt cell and pop it in. <laughs> really guys? Okay. It's not designed for end users, clearly. Let's go ahead and pop this on. You'll want to put that on after it's in the case. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, cause like, well, can I just put it on for temporaries? Okay. Yeah. I just want to, I, I won't even put thermal compound on for now. I just want to see. Um, oh, I need a screwdriver. No look catch. No, I'm, we're not doing that. Thanks. Man, if they just sold this heat sink, this thing is like badass Look. No idea if the performance is actually any good, but it's definitely badass looking. It looks awesome. Are we like at the point of diminishing returns though, being this far away from the CPU? I guess not with a passive heatsink. I see we've gone with Trident Z Royal dims because I guess we're going for the most thematically coherent build of all time. Now all we need oh, is a case, large and hefty enough to accommodate this flipping beast. And as Alex alluded to before, there is no case hefty enough to fit this heatsink through the motherboard tray while you're installing the motherboard. So we're gonna go ahead and pop it off now. Everything about this feels just kind of wrong, you know? I built so many computers in my life and this is the first one like this. <laughs> this is a thanks I hated and a half. My cursed motherboard. You have against this thing, Linus. It's just... <laughs> I had nothing against it. I was super excited about it until I had to actually like touch it, you know? It says on their website that it fits most cases, but uh -huh. some require modification. Yeah. We tried a few cases and lots of them interfered with the top of these heat pipes. And I think having your compatibility list account for people doing modifications to their case is kind of cheating. Because with a Dremel, theoretically, anything is compatible with anything. Oh yeah. That looks awesome. I mean, by the time you hack a hole in your side panel, it's probably not gonna be the cleanest mod ever done, but the potential's there. Well, let's get OCCT running, right? This is a CPU stressing tool that will allow us to see just how well that heatsink can keep up with a 6700K. Hottest core is up at around 65 degrees right now. It's not even hot to the touch yet. There's just so much metal. You're right up at the top of those heat pipes there. But you can also really see what a great job heat pipes do of moving heat around. It's not that much cooler at the very end of the heat pipe. It's really even. Meanwhile, over here, you can see that with every load spike, temperatures were peaking a little bit higher than before until now. You know what probably happened? the tiny bit of airflow from me moving the case around probably caused it to go down a little bit. Let's keep it still again. It steadied at around 80 degrees on the hottest core, which is not what we were expecting based on either Inktex's testing or Steve from Gamers Nexus's testing. However, we have observed that our CPU is only running at around 3.45 gigahertz. So we're thinking maybe there's a BIOS setting that's not allowing it to run at full power. I'm gonna go ahead and try that. Yeah, we got turbo working and it can't do it. <laughs> we managed to thermal throttle within about two or three minutes, but Anktech doesn't say you can do that. And it's a pretty easy problem to solve if you wanna just throw a big 200 millimeter fan on here. But Steve from Gamers Nexus already did that. 
we have other ideas. <laughs> okay, not too much, because remember this has some, oh my gosh, this feels really, really, really wrong, what we're about to do right now. Uh, oh, okay. All right, I will lift it. Oh, crap, I'm stuck. I'm snagged, dog. Our power cable is cable tied. LTTstore.com, baby. Get them cable ties. Okay. Okay. Oh, this feels so wrong. Wait, where are the CPU temps at? Uh, oh, it's thermal throttling right now. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Is it fine? I mean, theoretically, it should be fine. Oh, wow. <laughs> Now that's water cooling, boys. Okay, so we're at about 70 degrees. I think we can do better. Okay, phase one, lift the computer. Uh, I think getting on the table might be the best solution. I think that this table is on wheels and that's... Oh, oh, yes. It's still running. Okay. Um, no, yeah, no, you're not getting on the table, Alex. You ready? Yep. Yeah, go ahead and lift it. Okay, you're gonna have to have it for a little while though. What's that? That's not good. Did it power off? It's powering back on. Hold. Hold. I'm holding. Okay, one second. I just need to. Okay, I guess I should get these drinks. Wait, I just need to. Wait, hold on. I need to. Oh, God. So uh, water. There is, uh, there's water. Hold on, you gotta put it over this one. Okay, I got your second bucket here. <laughs> okay, we, you know what? We've got a little bit of submersion, but we're gonna have to add some more water. I'm gonna start another render. Should be fine. We're learning so many things today that will never be applicable to anyone else ever again. Small problem, Alex. Yeah. I think I may have actually splashed the VRMs over here when I rocked it back and forth. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's water. Okay, well that might explain why it was crashing under load. I'll put these in for fun while Alex gets a bag of ice. This is so cool. You can see the very end of the heatsink is a little bit cooler and you can kind of see a halo of warmth around it in the water. Hey Brandon, check this out. We were trying to stick a thermal probe in the water near the heatsink to kind of see how close these values are. And it kept reading exactly the same as far away. And what we realized is it takes such a small disruption to move these warm areas of water that you basically can't measure it by physically sticking something in. Watch this, watch this. Okay, I'm gonna blow on the surface of the water. Isn't that cool? Wanna get a shot of the premium ice? Premium. Get the ingredients, please. <laughs> All right, just got it. This bag's just gotta give birth here. Birth bag. No, I got this. When this hits it, are we gonna have a Titanic failure? Ugh. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me for not knowing how to use a bag of ice. I don't entertain much. I don't have any friends. Alex invited me to a Super Bowl viewing party once though. That was kind of him. Yeah, you brought your kids. It was really cool. <laughs> okay, so we're currently at 92 degrees Celsius. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay. There's uh there's four ice cubes stuck under the heat sink. This is so stupid. Well, look, come on, it's, I don't make the rules around here, Brandon. So that puts us at around 60 degrees. But I think we can do better 
Because as we've learned, even just small differences in location or flow can make a big difference to the actual temperature. So right up here, it's like 0.7 degrees. And then you go, you know, what? To eight to nine centimeters lower and you're at eight degrees. If only there was a way that we could move the fluid around inside the container. You think of everything, don't you? How fun is this? Okay, let's add a pump. This is a submersible pump. Do you want to go ahead and plug it in on the other side? Uh, sure. Uh, and I'm just going to YOLO it, I guess, right? Okay. The power cable's only in there a bit. Should be fine. I mean, the pump's power cable's in there too. What could go wrong? Okay, that seems like a good spot. Ooh, that's chilly. It's a chilly boy. Oh, it's splashy. <gasps> oh, it's really splashy, Alex. Hold on, turn it back on, turn it back on. I'm trying to show the peeps. Whoo. Uh, yeah, that's a little splashy for my liking. Uh, I don't know, let's find out. Maybe if it was just the right amount of splashy. Is it still blending? It is, but I think the temperature is like the same. That kind of makes sense because it was coldest at the top. No, 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 it's trending down, look. Oh, yeah. It's totally trending down. And we're still at 4.37. You can totally see the water like touching the base of the heat sink. <laughs> Settling in at 56 degrees on the package, full load. Uh, pretty practical, right? Yeah, daily for sure. And you might get the opportunity to daily drive a cooling system like this because they're actually releasing a more gaming oriented, I guess, product. It's based on a Z490 chipset. Yep. So, um, yeah, I, we could probably come up with something better for daily driving, couldn't we? I think we can. We will. We will. I promise. Make sure you're subscribed. And make sure you check out our sponsor. Thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. FlexiSpot offers ergonomic solutions that help people lead healthier, more productive lives. And they're celebrating their birthday by offering 15% off everything site-wide and up to 30% off flash deals each day from May 24th until the 30th. One of the products available is their Canna Bamboo Standing Desk, which offers customizable height presets, anti-collision, and is super easy to install. And the bamboo material is made with lateral compression tech to retain the natural, beautiful grain of every bamboo strip. The frame can handle up to 275 pounds, stands over four feet, and is available in three different colors. FlexiSpot is even giving away three desks to LTT viewers. All you've got to do is click the link below to enter. So don't wait and learn more about the sale at the link in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video and you like Linus and Alex crazy cooling projects, maybe you'd enjoy the, um, why don't we do the five gigahertz uh, blowy Matron laptop overclock? Sure. Yeah, go watch that, it's a good video. Or when we tried to reuse thermal compound from inside a CPU. No, that wasn't good. No, that wasn't a good video really.